All thanks we give to you, Lord. All thanks we give to you, Lord. Hey. All thanks we give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. All thanks we give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord.
Jesus is worthy to be praised. King of kings, everlasting Father, is worthy to be praised. Oh, King of glory, everlasting. Children of God, shout hallelujah. Hey, hey. Children of God, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
While we remain standing, we will continue the proceedings of this funeral service as we take the hymn. And to lead us in the hymn, we will welcome Pastor Charles Abraham. The hymn will take on page three of the program in Christ alone. Quiet, please. Oh! 
to take the Bible reading for this funeral service and this Bible reading will be taken by Pastor Mrs. Olua Kemi Sojino. Please let's give her a round of applause. Praise the Lord. The Bible reading for this funeral service is taken from the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, 13 to 18. First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. I read. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that, which, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the, with the, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18. And the last verse. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord bless the understanding of his word in Jesus' name. I think our amen was too weak. May the Lord comfort us with the reading of his word in Jesus' name. It is time for us to listen to the profile of the deceased. And to read the profile of the deceased, we are going to cheerfully welcome because we are a gathering of the people of faith so we will cheerfully welcome mr olumide aino as he will be reading the profile of the deceased i don't think our applause is doing well enough as a matter of encouragement for him and for everybody else Thank you very much. Right. Thanks for the honor to read this biography of my elder sister, late Dr. Mrs. Ola Pisi Fumilayo Lawa. Ni Haino. Olabisi Fumilayo Lauer, Dr. Mrs. Olabisi Fumilayo Lauer, married to Olani Rezak Lauer, survived by children, siblings, and family members. Her early childhood. Olabisi was a false born into the family of the late elder Joseph Bamibola and elder Mrs. Elizabeth Folake Aino. She was born on March 29, 1968, in Katsina, Katsina State, Nigeria. She hails from Omoaro in the Recording Local Government Area, Kwara State. She was an easygoing child who was dearly loved by both her parents and we, the siblings. Olavisi studied her academic journey at community school in Oro, where she completed her primary education. She then went to Titcom College for her secondary school. In 1990, she graduated from the University of Loring, Kora State, with a Bachelor of Art in English Language. After completing her national youth service in Port River State in 1991, she obtained a postgraduate diploma from University of Calabar in 2002. Olavisi's test for knowledge did not end there. She pursued her master's degree in English language from the University of Lagos, which she obtained in 2010, and she was also a fellow at the Chartered Institute of Human Resources Management. Olabisi was highly dedicated. Olabisi was a highly dedicated civil servant who served her country with utmost zeal and commitment. She started her career in the federal civil service as an education officer, grade two, grade level O eight, January thirty first, nineteen ninety two. She was subsequently promoted to Education Officer Grade 1 in 1999 and then to Senior Education Officer GL 10, Grade Level 10. She taught the English language at the prestigious King's College in Lagos and she was later promoted as Vice Principal at Federal Government College, Azari, in August 2012. Through hard work and dedication, Olabisi continued to climb the ranks and promoted to Assistant Director Education Grade Level 15 in Directorate Cater, 1st January 2011. 
are excellent performance and her further promotion and she was subsequently promoted to deputy director 2018 and director in 2021 in federal ministry of education in recognition of her expertise olabusi was appointed to, Niger to represent nigeria as a director of education health social affairs in the executive secretariat of the community of sahel sahara state censored in Jemer, chad where she served until her passing olabusi's work ethic dedication commitment to excellence in service we always be remembered Olabisi had a profound impact on the life of those around her, including friends, family, and anyone she met. She was committed to helping those who were less fortunate, sponsoring young people from primary school all the way up to the university level. Additionally, Olabisi was dedicated to the growth of the community and played an instrumental role in promoting kingdom advancement. She loved uh, Jesus Christ so much and made sure to propagate his love in every form she called, everywhere she went. Her influence was felt by all the stakeholders in her job and she was highly celebrated and honored for her achievement. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you all. Please, let's give a round of applause. Not just for the person who read the profile, but the, for the profile that has just been read. Let's, give, let's, let's make the applause louder. Let's make the applause louder. I know that the severance of a loved one hurts, and it can make the soul weary, but we do not mourn like those who have no hope. So let us celebrate the hope that we all have in Christ with another round of applause. We will take the announcement, and after the announcement, the choir will give their special rendition for this funeral service, after which we will receive the word of God as will be brought to us by Pastor Sojinu Ola Daniel. Pastor Sojinu Ola Daniel will be bringing us a sermon immediately after the special ministration by the choir. For now, we take the announcement and to lead us and to read the announcement would be Pastor Raymond. Please let's welcome him. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, we are brethren in the Lord. We should be celebrating. This is the celebration of life for all the profile that I've read. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, to the glory of God, this is the redeemed Christian church of God, gate of heaven zone. And we are all in the redemption city of God. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. The only announcement we have is that immediately after the burial service here, after the ceremony here, we'll be going to the memorial garden at the uh, Estate 15. Uh, and uh, we are told that it is strictly for uh, members of the family uh, that we should ensure that we are head to the rules of the memorial garden. And I pray that the Lord will bless us as we obey in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, we just want to remind ourselves that after our journey on this earth, there is someone in which we are going to open our eyes. And it is from this earth that you are going to decide where you are going to end your eternity. Be blessed as you listen in Jesus' name. Amen. We 
shall sing, we shall sing, alleluia. We shall sing, we shall sing, alleluia. We shall sing, we shall sing, alleluia. We shall sing, we shall sing, we shall sing, we shall sing, alleluia. We shall sing Alleluia When the trumpet shall sound And the dead will be raised And those that are living will be raptured My friend, my brethren Where will you be on the day? A fire, paradise, the choice is yours a fire paradise the choice is yours when the trumpet shall sound and the dead will be raised and those that are living will be raptured my friend my brethren where will you be on the day a fire Paradise, the choice is yours. A fire, paradise, the choice is yours. We shall sing, we shall sing, we shall sing. When we get to heaven, we shall sing hallelujah. We shall sing hallelujah. We shall sing hallelujah. We shall sing, we shall sing hallelujah. How come, hallelujah? How come, how come we hallelujah? How come, how come, hallelujah? How come, how come, hallelujah? How come we hallelujah, Lord? How come, how come, hallelujah? Nigati pe badon ta won oku yo dide I want to allay yo parada Hara hore me nimbolu wa lojo no parade se orun apade ewo loyan parade se orun apade ewo loyan Nigati pe badon ta won oku yo dide I want to allay yo parada Hara hore me nimbolu wa lojo no parade se orun apade ewo loyan parade se how come? How come? How come? Hallelujah! 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 Toma gara bi cristale le bai te holoro au pare o au pare le ti o o do di da o do di da We shall sing, 
We shall sing hallelujah. We shall sing. We shall sing. We shall sing hallelujah. We shall sing hallelujah. Oh, we shall sing. We shall sing hallelujah. Oh, we shall sing. We shall sing. We shall sing hallelujah. Glorious God, you are the beautiful King. As a land, God, we bow before you. We say, Glorious God, Glorious God, it's a beautiful, beautiful King. As the land's gone, as the land's gone, we bow before your throne. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord. Worship you, King of Kings. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. The unquestionable God will worship you. We reverence you for who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, this morning we submit to tell it to you. And we ask that you would do a good work in our lives this morning. Holy Spirit, do that which only you can do this morning. Speak to us. Comfort us. Encourage us. Support us. Lord, everyone here today that need to have an encounter with you, let that happen now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. 
For in Jesus' most precious name we have prayed. The believers will say, Better. Please be seated in God's presence. Let me say a big thank you to our Father in the Lord, the APIC, for this privilege to be able to share with us at a time like this. Today is not actually a time for very long sermons, but to just remind ourselves of a few things. I titled what I will be talking, sharing with us this morning, I titled it The Journey Called Life. The Journey Called Life. Life is a journey that starts with the birth of a child. That ends with the exit of that child. Life is a journey. Ironically, when a child is born, the child cries. But the people around the child rejoices. There is big celebration. When you go for the christening, big celebration. For the dedication, big celebration. But the day the child was born, the child came into this world crying. And as a matter of fact, if the child refused to cry, the doctors, the medical personnel will force the child to cry. They will need to spank the child to be sure the child is well. On the other side, the day that child exits the world, the people around the child that were laughing, rejoicing at his birth or at her birth are now the ones weeping. And so life it's a journey. The day we are born, we enter into the vehicle called life. The driver drives us. And as soon as we get to our bus stops, the brake is smashed. The door opens on its own. And the next person gets down. Like I told those who were at the service of song yesterday, one challenge about it is that no one actually knows whose bus stop it is next. On the 14th of September, 2023, the brake was smashed. The door opened. And our sister, Dr. Mrs. Olabisi Lawal, came down from the vehicle. And I asked the question, who is next? Nobody knows. So life must be seen by all men as a journey that has a beginning that will surely come to an end. And that must inform how we live our lives. Because you are not the driver. The driver no when to match the brake and ask the door to open for either you or me to exit. Job, trying to understand life could not find a way to describe the life of man. And in Job chapter 14, this is what he has to say. Job chapter 14, I would like to read verses 1 and 2. 
He says, man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fled also as a shadow and continueth not. So man is like a flower that blossoms in the day and then suddenly is cut off and is no more. And it's no more. And so if this is the fate of the life of a man, if this is the journey of man, then there are a few things I would like us to remind ourselves of this morning. And there are a few things that we must go home with this morning. Number one, Everyone living must understand that my life, this life that I live, is not my own. This life that you live right now is not your own. That the owner can call for it. Sometimes or most times unannounced. It is not everybody that has the privilege of knowing that I'm about to go. For those who are fortunate to know that this may lead to me hesitating, they have the opportunity to quickly put their houses in order. For some, it comes so suddenly, unprepared. So we must understand that the life I am living is not my own. Apostle Paul speaking in Romans chapter 14 verse 8. He said whether we die or we live. Whether we are alive or we are dead. He said we belong to him. We belong to God. We are his properties. Whether we are alive or we are dead. So the life you live is not your own. And therefore it is wrong to think or to even say. That it is my life. I can live it how I want. No you cannot. Because it is not your life. You cannot live it how you want. You can only live it. According to the manufacturer's specification. It is not your life. You are gifted with it. And it will be taken away one day. So you can't live it anyhow. You can't live it recklessly. You can't leave it how, to, how you want. You need to check for the manufacturer's specification, which is the scriptures, the Bible, and leave it according to the manufacturer's specification. Number two, thing that we must remind ourselves about is that this life will come to an end. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Are you surprised that even the Bible said that even the heavens and the earth shall pass away? God says it is not, it is just my word that will not go unfulfilled. Nothing, including life, lies forever. No matter how old you grow, you will go one day. And so the question is when it ends, how will you end? We've, we've heard about the beautiful profile of our sister. So many endeavors. So many achievements. Hard working. Dutiful. Loving God. But it came to an end. The same way for everyone still here today except rapture takes place it will come to an end. Number three is that when I eventually end this journey, I will account for the journey. I will account for the journey. I've said three things. Number one, the life I live is not my own. 
the life you live is not yours. Number two is that this life, no matter how long you live it, it will come to an end. And number three, when it eventually ends, there's accountability. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it says it is appointed unto man to die once and after that is judgment. So, after this journey, there is a day of accountability. Surprisingly, on that day, nobody will be reading your profiles. Nobody will be checking your houses. Nobody will be looking at the number of children. No, nobody is taking note, is going to be con you know, concerned about your estates. The concern will be about your life. How was it lived? I shared a scripture with us yesterday. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Interesting scripture. Verse 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 7. Verse 1 and 2. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. And I say how? How? Say the day of death than the day of one's birth. In verse 2 it says, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of how many people? How many people? Now, don't be confused. The men here is not about gender. So don't think that it is not the end of women. He's talking about all humans. Say, so that is the end of all humans. Which means that there is a day of death. And he says it's better, which means that we should actually celebrate people in their death than we celebrate them in their birth. But surprisingly, we weep during their death. We mourn. Because the day of death is better than the day of birth. Which means that all men will come to this very end, this reality. Young, old, tall, short, rich, poor, male, female, all men will come to this end, the reality of all men. So if that is the case, what manner of people ought we to be? What manner of people are we supposed to be? How should we live this life? I have the privilege of pastoring the diseased. And I can say, as a human being, what I know, I'm not God. That she loved the Lord. She was concerned about the kingdom. She was involved in the kingdom business, kingdom work, actively. Even when she was in shard, she was still very involved. But she's gone. The rest is now between her and her maker. One day, it will be between you and your maker. Then what will be the records. I need us to pause a while and think and reflect about our lives and answer this very, quest this very important question. If it happens now, what next? Praise the name of the Lord. You know, when I was when I got the news of our sister's departure, I was 
seriously, seriously broken. And I struggled with this for weeks. But it is a reality. And then like the preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I tried to draw conclusions. And this is the conclusion of the preacher. Ecclesiastes 12, I will read verses 13 and 14. The preacher having examined life, looked at all the issues of life, wake up in the morning 5 a.m., run on the road, get into Lagos traffic, try to achieve something, got home 12 midnight, wake up again 4.30, dress up again, on the road. And then, and then this is all that life is about. And then the preacher came to a conclusion about life. And this is what the preacher has to say. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And this is the conclusion. Number one, fear God and keep his command, his commandments. For this is the whole duty of who? Of man. Say, fear God. And keep his commandment because this is the duty, the whole duty of man. And then in verse 14 he says, For God shall bring every walk into judgment. Every walk done under the closed door, done in the open, done in the bush, in the forest. Every walk, every walk done by the pastor, Done by the members in the pew. Done by the ministers. Done by the choir. Done by family members. Every walk. Every walk. Every means every. Secret discussions. Secret manipulations. Every walk. Every walk shall be brought into judgment. And he didn't end there. He says, with every secret thing, whether it be good, or that whether it be evil. So I leave you with this. Think about this. If my works, the works of our sister will surely be brought into judgment. The works of our sister. Your works will be brought into judgment. Mine will be brought into judgment. So, if these works are brought into judgment, what will be the result? As I conclude, I want to leave you with this assurance that for the believer, death is just a means to an end. It's not the end in itself. Because we, the believers, don't die. We only fall asleep. Because we know that we are going to rise again and wake up again to be with the Lord at the resurrection morning. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonian church, I don't want to keep you in ignorance of this. You need to know that the believers who fall asleep in Christ, on that day, they shall rise first. And anyone who is still left behind that are believers, they will now be taken up to join them in the sky to be with the Lord. So we are confident, we are comforted and consoled that our sister, even though she's asleep, at the resurrection morning, she will rise again. Is this about the believer in Christ Jesus? This is our hope. The Bible says if all our hope is in this world, then we are of all men most miserable. Our hope is therefore not in this world. Our hope is in the assurance that again we will rise again on the resurrection morning to be with the Lord, never to depart from him again. But that is the believer's hope. What is the hope that you have if you have no Christ? The Bible says Christ in you the hope of glory. So Christ is the hope 
of glory. You don't have him, you are hopeless. As I close this sermon this morning, I would like you to take two minutes, bow down your heads, and answer these few questions before we pray. If the Savior calls me, if the owner of my life calls me now, if he calls me now, where will I end? Ask this question yourself and answer it. How have I been living my life? Do I have a hope that on that day I will rise again with him? What is my hope? If you are here this morning and you have not encountered the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are missing out on hope because that is the access to hope. Because we know that even if we fall asleep in him, we will rise again to be with him. You are here this morning. You have not at any point in time have an encounter with the Lord. You have not even accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior. This funeral service provides an ample opportunity for you to ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. The life you live now is not yours. And if anything happens right now to you, how sure are you of where you will end? Bow down your heads and talk to the Lord. Maybe you want to ask the Lord to come into your heart this morning. You want to ask Jesus to come into your heart and come into your life and be your personal Lord and Savior so that even when it happens, you will have hope. Hope of being with him again. Maybe you are here this morning you are asking the Lord to come into your heart. I would like you to pray this prayer with me. I would like you to say after me, if you are asking the Lord to save you this morning, if you are giving your heart to Jesus this morning, I would like you to pray this prayer with me before I pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning just the way I am. I recognize and I said that I am a sinner. And that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. To save me from the cross of sin. I confess all of my sins this morning. And I ask of you to come into my heart. And come into my life. Save me and be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus name we have prayed. My Father and my God in heaven, we want to thank you once again for the privilege to share your word this morning. And I'm asking, oh God, for everyone who have confessed and asked you to be their Lord and personal Savior. I ask my Father that you will rescue them. You will save them eternally. In the name of Jesus. I ask that the yoke of sin be broken. I ask that the liberty that is in Christ just be given to them today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for all of us together, Lord, this morning I ask, may we not miss heaven. Lord, may we not miss heaven. When our time will come, may we be able to reign with you again. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus Mighty name, we have prayed. The believers will say a better amen. amen.
I want us to celebrate the delivery of the word of God. Even as our hearts receive comfort and hope, even as we form resolutions to even ensure that our eternity is secured even when our time comes. Now we are all going to rise as we will pray, both for the families and the loved ones that have been left behind by the deceased. Please, I would like us all to rise on our feet, even as we welcome Pastor Tokumbo Areola to lead us in prayers and bring the service towards its close. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. I'd like to crave your indulgence. Please, let's take a seat for just one minute. Quick one. The owner of this vehicle, Mercedes-Benz, ABJ101. Your lights are on. Please go and attend to your vehicle. Mercedes-Benz. ABJ 101, your lights are on. I want to thank the Almighty God for the man of God that brought the word. I pray that the Almighty God will strengthen and uphold you and take your ministries to a greater height in Jesus' name. As the MC has said, we just want to look at something very, very key. The preacher told us about Hebrews 9.27. I just want to make a quick reference here. I know it's very painful to lose someone that you love so much, especially with this kind of pedigree. But you also look at the dying days, days preceding our departure. Please, I'm privileged to know the last word from the disease. She said, the battle is over. Is that right? The battle is over. I'm sure she had looked at everything. And then everything she needed to do, put in a house in order, maybe in form of restitution, and then she made that pronouncement, the battle is over. And so I agree with the preacher. As painful as it is, when you look at someone using that passing word, ordinarily it's supposed to bring comfort because she knew where she was going. If you look at the Bible reading we took, just as the preacher has said, we don't really say that a believer has died. We say she has slept. And if somebody sleeps, the person will wake up again at resurrection night. Praise the Lord. Which is why as we are going to see, especially the family member, and we are still going to demonstrate it here, when we will be paying our last respect, we will wave. We don't cast stone in our cemetery. We wave. We wave because the departed soul is sleeping. And on the last day, she will rise. Let me hear a better amen. The question is, when my time comes, when your time comes, would you have that opportunity? I pray that none of us will die suddenly in Jesus' name. And in the kingdom of God will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. Again, before we take that prayer, I just want to crave the indulgence of the congregation to... There's a woman that stood with her sister throughout the period, practically almost sleeping in the hospital. And of course with the husband, I want us to give her this 
opportunity to say a word or two or a special number in two minutes. Dickiness Buki, please come to the microphone quickly. Let's clap for Jesus. Okay, you can give her extra mic. There's an extra mic here. Praise the name of the Lord. And after her, we we'll also call on Sister Olu Akemi, Olu Maureen. Maybe a minute or two. We we'll give them in that order. Odoma, after her. All right? Thank you very much, sir. Pastor. Thank you for this privilege. And thank you for the opportunity to be stand before the people of God to share very briefly about my sister. Olabisi Olufumila Yorazak, after sucking breast came to the world, he called, she called me to come. I'm my opposite version. She's very quiet, she's very reserved, but I am not like that. 21st day of August, to be precise, the journey started at the Federal, Federal Medical Center, Ebute Meta. A typical me, I had to call on my two sisters, Oluwashew and Omolara. This is my journey I started. Pastor came on his way to the hospital. He couldn't see me. So many people came because we were not, they were not allowed to see her. The, but the journey started. We kept going, we kept going, we kept going. At a point, at some point, I can't, take any, I can't do anything again on my own. I had to beckon on the head of our family because I'm the only sibling that I'm in Nigeria. All others, they are not here. So I had to call on our elder ones. This is what is happening. Okay, don't worry. We'll keep praying. We'll keep doing this. And the journey started. And it started and it started and it started. Fast forward to when we got to where she took the last 13, last week, she passed 14th of September, which was a Thursday. But that Monday or Tuesday, we were all in the hospital. Our husband, my husband, some of us. And she said, Bukola, Ma. Where is this person? Why is he not here? You can see the whole family running up and down. Why is he not here? I say, ah, auntie. Yes, ma. And all of us, they say, we will call, we will call, we will call, we will call. That's the last person that you expect my sister to say you want to see. He, she kept doing the right thing. On hospital bed, one day, she was on the ICU. And she instructed me, go and get me 150,000 naira cash. Yes, ma. I went. 
the kind of training we were given from a background. She's just two years ahead of me. But it is ma, ma, ma that we gave to her. Most of my friends is a, a year or two years or even months. But it does say ma, ma, ma. Because that is the way this thing was to every one of us. And she called me and said, I needed 150,000. I need cash. I got it. I brought it to the hospital. Sister, what do you want to do about it? Say, call the matron for me. And I called the matron. The woman came and said, Mrs. Lawa, we are heard you want to see. I said, yes, Ma, take this money. Huh? The woman said, for what? Say, for your service to humanity. Yes, for your service to humanity. I can't forget that word. And the woman looked at her and called on the other nurses and everybody on duty. Say, let's pray for this woman. She's on her sick bed. She might live, she might not live. And she's still sowing into our lives. They have been working in this hospital. They've never seen anybody like that. Giving out, even at the point of death. They prayed for her. A lot of people pray, but God says otherwise. That ends there. And she now kept the other 50,000. Beside that, she said, me envelope me. Put it beneath my envelope. Sister, what do you want to do? Is it anybody that comes, 5,000, 10,000, as I'm led. That's how we give me people. And she was doing it again. The other day, another time, she said, can I have my bag? I gave it to her because phones, everything has been with me since 21st of August. I gave it to her and said, for me, talking GT me, I gave it to her. She made transfer and she does every month to my mother, 200,000 naira. She did the transfer to mommy and said, all the people you do this and this for in Omaran, do it. Don't say because I'm sick, we will not do it. She did, she did it. Mommy did it. Mommy, was in, mommy is Lagos with me. But when we have to like send cash home and say, I don't know who get 5,000, 7,000, 10,000. That's the way she, do. she does it. That is typical and typical for you. I take total less in the fact that the last word she said before she took her last breath. In the afternoon of, of Wednesday. Let us hear that one. Yes, sir. In the afternoon of Wednesday, I was standing. She was on the hospital like the bed like this. I was standing here, but I was on the other side. But that I mean the husband. And she said, Bukola, I said, Ma, the, the battle is over. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we allow Sister Buki, we will not live here today. Let's clap for Jesus. The battle indeed is over. over. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. That's one minute, man, sir. To some people, this might be a lady that you heard that she came to your house and said, Ma, I will lose dog on her for dog to bite her. But to us, she's our pillar. Hallelujah. She's our mother. She's our hero. Tabatua Yewa and Yella Matotele. I will keep celebrating you. Many people know her from my status. Bisi or Baba Bisi. Many people are here today because of that thing, because of that name. Bisi or Baba Bisi. God bless you, sister. Thank you, sir. Amen. Sister Lua, can you one minute? Because your sister has used your time. <laughs> Thy kingdom come, O Lord. Thy rule, O Christ, be
Say, let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Oluwakemi. As he was doing a rendition, the Holy Spirit ministered to me that I will not be fair to the other half of this disease. Shall we just put our hands together as we welcome Brother Lawa to say a word? I don't know what you want to say. We didn't tell you this before. You are beside her at her departure. Please take the microphone. One minute. Let's just allow him. Let's clap for Jesus. It is well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God Almighty. I thank the church, the leader of the church, all the ministers, the choirs, family, friends, and the well wishers. On behalf of myself, my son, and the family, we want to say a big thank you to every one of you that are present and those ones that are also not be able to be here but they are watching us on the zoom i just want to say thank you to every one of us i mean all, every one of them wherever they are that god almighty will not allow this to happen in their own family i pray that god will give every one of us long life amen if i want to say i should start to say something about my wife i don't think uh, we will live here today but i thank god for the life she lives and I thank God that she lived well. She lived a good life. All I will just say is that uh, she should just rest up. And I wish her eternity. Go, we uphold her in the mighty name of Jesus. For every one of you here, I thank you very much again and again and again. Thank you so much. God will be with you. And you will also get to your destination well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much. It is well with you, sir. It is well. God bless you. All right. We want to quickly go into prayers now. I was given an assignment, you know, as a pastor. I was given a wonderful assignment that I needed the help of the Holy Spirit to do. The beckon on me that I should break the news to the mother of the disease. Oh, the very serious one. And you know, as a pastor, you know, ministry is not only on the altar, and I did it to the best of my knowledge. And so the first prayer we are going to do today is for Mama. Shall we please rise? Eternal King of Glory. Uh, maybe the family member can also step forward. We'll do it together. Hallelujah. He has done great things. The Lord has done great things. He has done great things. The Lord has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his soul. Daddy Lord, it doesn't matter what happens, you are, you are our God. You are the Almighty. You give and you take. You can fight. For you said in your word, in all things, we should do what? You give thanks. It has pleased you, Daddy, to take away our sister. You said in your word, precious it is the life of believer. And I know you too, you are pained. May the name of the Lord be glorified. 
we pray for mama. I know it is very, very painful. I pray that this very moment mama will recover. She will never weep again. She will live long. She will never witness the death of any of her children again. She will never witness the death of any of her grandchildren again. I pray that God will give her succor. I asked mama, I said mama, before I broke the news, is there anything anyone will do for you, to you, that will make you to be angry? He said, anyone that wants to stand in my way to go to heaven. So mama knows the way to heaven. I pray that the word of God will comfort mama. Mama will decree into your life, weep no more. Weep no more. Instead of sorrow, receive joy. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of mama. The Bible says, remember you know the things of old. Very, very difficult to appropriate. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help mama in the name of Jesus. The Lord will strengthen our feeble legs. Every organ of ours will work well. And God will make her to live long and to live well. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Brother Lawal, I pray for you and your family. This is, this is a loss. But what can we do? What can we say? The Lord Jesus is the only one that can give a widower a wife. He will be a wife to you. He will help you. I know the good times you have spent together. Once in a while you want to think about it. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. I say again, Brother Lawa, the Holy Spirit will comfort you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your son. You will not weep again. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for the family member of the disease. The root through which she came. My God will comfort you. The Lord Jesus will comfort you. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. Receive help from above. You will never weep again. The good legacy their sister has left behind, you will continue in them. Now that we know the last word that she said, weep no more. I say weep no more. Said, the battle is over. No more pain. No more struggle. That word will give you comfort. It shall be well with you. He said, I lift up my eyes under the hills. From whence cometh me, help me, help come from the Almighty, the makers of the heavens and the earth. That loop O, that that O that has been created. God will send you help. He will take charge. What she would have been doing for you and to you, God will send help to you. He shall be well with your going. He shall be well with your coming. Those of you that travel from far and near, God will keep you. We take you to your destinations in safety. On this altar, I decree in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Thank you, ancient of this. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Now let the people of God shout hallelujah. I pray for all well-wishers. We will not use these ones to repay it for one another. God will keep you all. You will not weep. You will move forward. You will go higher. So shall it be. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please go to your seat. We need the attention of the undertakers because we want to pay our last respect. To come and open the upper side. The ushers will help us from this side. Now we just move in circle and wave. Like I told you, we don't cast stone in this church. We don't ask the firstborn to come and throw stand. We don't do that. And our reference point is that Bible reading. 
For every believer that goes, she has gone to sleep because she's going to rise again. So by waving, you are making a statement. Hallelujah. The choir can just give us a soft la 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 something like that. Great is thy oh, faithfulness. Oh, yeah. No other father. Let's come and pay our last respects in that there order. There is no shadow. The ministers of God, okay. Just wait. We'll say Just wait. Is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, you must see us. All the happy Wave to your sister. Lord, you reign. Will the grateful heart will lift our hands to you? Proclaim the Lord, you reign. Who say, Great are you, Lord? Great is you.
Let's clap for Jesus. Is still God. Let's clap, clap, clap for Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. He's the lover of our souls. He's a good God. We want to bring this service to a halt. And uh, we shall be taking the recession on him. As we prepare for that, it's on page 15. Through the love of God our Savior. That's going to be the aim. As the choir will be getting set. And the, and the undertakers as well. Want to use this opportunity. To thank the pastorate. Especially the pastor of this church. Pastor Abijo. RCCG Gate of Heaven. For this warm reception starting with the admin and the choir, the ushers God will bless you richly in Jesus name please say a better amen. amen now this is the order of recession the cups you go out first followed by the ministers of God followed by the choir and the family member and all others we follow. Alright. The choir will be in front. Alright. And then the ministers of God. Followed by the cops. And then family members. Shall we please be on our feet. As we take the recession on him.
We want to thank you for this grace you have given to us to conclude this burial service. May your name be praised forever in Jesus' name. As we go, go with us. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, Oh
but he will care.